It's an ocean with a streak of mongrel. Bass Strait can be cruel, but three men on a few metres of fibreglass are about to take it on. 240 kilometres of open water on a paddleboard. No one's ever done it before and I feel with it in my backyard, it's kind of one of those things I want to do and be the first to do it, it'd be awesome. I think taking Bass straight on in a big boat is a challenge and a, and a real handful of times, but to take it on on a paddleboard where you've really got no protection, um, you know, you're really on your own out there, it's a huge undertaking. It's ancient, that, that urge to cross that sort of water. It just seems insurmountable when you really look at it and you go, man, that's a long, long way away. The date with the strait has its origins in Hawaii, factory for great watermen since the dawn of time. The Molokai World Paddling Championship is a torturous 52 kilometer journey against wind, currents and tide from Molokai to Oahu. In 2012, Australia's Zeb Walsh was edged out in the 12-foot class by the 18-year-old American prodigy Jack Barr. There was less than a minute in the finish, and last year Zeb came back to return the favour. In the 18-foot class, Australia's Brad Gall has been unbeatable for two years. These three Molokai world champions have teamed up to attempt the seemingly impossible paddling from mainland Australia across Bass Strait to Tasmania. It's our sort of version of the Hawaiian sort of islands across uh, from the bottom of Australia to Tasmania. This channel, it's, it's extremely gnarly. It's got a lot of currents and weather and wind and it's just going to be a true test of us versus the ocean and see how far we can go. The world knows how deadly this part of Australia can be. Icy Antarctic swells and shallow depths make Bass Strait twice as rough as the English Channel. It's been likened to the Bermuda Triangle, where the conditions change rapidly. Boats disappear. There's plenty of dangers. I mean, Mother Nature can throw anything at you. There's the marine life out there. There's uh, a few big fish in that, in that area. <laughs> the toughest I've experienced down there is when it's from the west, because then the way the current works out sometimes, it'll, the wind will go against the current. And that's what will cause the waves to break. And, um, and then 98, when we did that race, it was, I mean, they reckon they measured a few at around 100. But it was just like mountain after mountain. You just look to the horizon, you just be like, man. Each night, they'll camp on the rocky outcrop islands that dot Bass Strait. Uh, it wouldn't be my, on my sort of top, <laughs> top five camping destination. <laughs> Usually when you're sailing past and you're thinking, yeah, I'm not going to stop here. Rush, fatigue, uh, muscle soreness, uh, dehydration, hypothermia. We're going to be tired and waking up the next morning to it again. Is, it's really going to be tough towards the end of the trip. Whenever you're testing yourself or your body, you're only limited by your mind and how far that can take you. And if you've got no parameters there, then you will you go all the way. Three amazing athletes who don't know how to quit. One treacherous body of water with no mercy. The date with the strait. Australia's ultimate contest between man and the ocean. In all races over 10, 15 miles, it just gets in your head saying you can't go any further and it's gonna be harder and you just can't do it, but you gotta push through that mental barrier. It's it's a formidable piece of water and it's you know it's not for the faint-hearted it's a, it's a challenge and you just don't know what you're going to get this is our everest no one's ever done it. it it's i guess it's almost like pioneering the adventure paddle or i guess we're the guinea pigs to see how hard it is and and if it can be done <laughs>